That's right. Oh, gee. Doesn't even work. <laughs> no, Timmy, that's just a toy. But with these upgrades, you can have a working radio, rad meter, and even a light-up screen. So I can play Fallout on it? <laughs> no, Timmy. There's not enough space behind that little screen to be able to fit any kind of working device. And that's why we're going to do it anyways on this episode of Your Geek Fix. So this year I'm cosplaying as a Robco service and repairman, or at least this is my take on it. I don't wear overalls. I also updated or uh, upgraded my Optivisor to be more Fallout ready. But most of all, this was my opportunity to finally get a Pip-Boy 2000. That's right, Pip-Boy 2000. The fun, easy, full-size kit. Why, even little Susie can assemble it with the included instructions and an advanced degree in nuclear physics. Pip-Boy 2000 comes with all the parts needed to build your Pip-Boy. And now you can even get these upgrade kits for working radio and rad meter. The screen even lights up and sputters so you have to hit it to, to get it straighten out. And, that's pretty cool, but what everyone wants is an actual device, one that can actually uh, play music or connect to Fallout 4, and I think we've figured out a way to actually do that. But before we can make any upgrades, we need to open and assemble the Pip-Boy. Speaking of which, look at that. How can I throw that out? That's, that's impossible. It's a, it's a box. It's just a box. But now I'm going to have to store it someplace. And, and they just keep doing that sort of thing. Once when you get inside, uh, same thing. Inside there is another box, a case. And uh, this case has all sorts of detail on it. I mean, you have the label on the outside. You see the latches, the handles, uh, some of the inlay, the vault symbol there. And then when we uh, open it up, it has great artwork on the inside and it shows off the parts really nicely. This is actually what inspired me. It reminds me of a 1950s showroom display. And that's what I want my Pip-Boy to look like. So while most people are out grunging up their Pip-Boys, I think I want mine to have a clean, sparkly enameled look. I think it's a lot better to paint these parts before we actually try to assemble it. So step one is to take all the parts out and then paint it. I'd be really careful with some of these pieces because they're just too fragile to pull out. Uh, so take them out slowly. Everything has a place and it's organized until you get to this box. And then uh, it's just uh, a bunch of random parts. So I think I'm gonna need to organize those. But first we're gonna need to sand these parts and I'm gonna be using some really rough uh, sandpaper as well as some really soft high grade sandpaper in order to be able to get all these flashings off and uh, to make it so the paint can stick. So once when that was all prepped, it was ready to be painted. And the two colors that I used most on this were blue galaxy and green copper. Now if you just try spraying these by themselves, what you'll find is it just looks clear. It looks like nothing's coming out. Truth is, it's mostly a glitter that's coming out and a little bit of a tint. But for the most part, it's just a gloss. Uh, and so uh, if you don't know better, it does not look like what the caps look like. You have to have some kind of color underneath. So I start off the first layer using a dark green by Model Masters and a turquoise metallic for the uh, blue metal pieces. And once when those were dry, I sprayed them uh, with the blue galaxy for the blue metal and the green copper for the green metal. And the way it came out looks absolutely awesome. I mean, look at this color particularly, I just really like. It came out so good. And uh, 
it's reflective underneath light in such a way that I just really like it. It has kind of a color that you would expect to see on a car or, or something like that. So it came out great. This is exactly the color that I was looking for. Now we can apply our decals. They all come on a sheet like this. I have uh, some extra ones that you can put on that mean different things. Uh, you get to pick the dates that you wanted. I also put some gloss on the timer numbers uh, to give it more of a windowed effect instead of just a sticker. One thing I don't like about this kit is it comes with these boxes that are just full of a bunch of random parts. And while that's kind of neat, it even has a picture on the box. It just a whole bunch of random pieces. And the problem with that is when you pour it out, there's just all these little parts. They're not organized in such a way that you can see what's what. So I took them and poured them out into the sandwich bags so at least I could see what I'm picking for and, and more easily access it. There are instructions inside the kit, but they are complex and a bit ambiguous. For example, uh, use this screw. Looks like this. There's no size, no numbers, I don't know. So for this very reason, I think I'm gonna start off easy with just the hollow tape. There are also tools that this comes with uh, from little Voltec screwdrivers uh, to a wrench to uh, this part right here we'll need later on for taking off the buttons. Um, but these are primarily for the hollow tapes and some bolts on the sides. I don't recommend trying to build the whole thing with these tools. Get some real tools to do that. These tape kits are also sold separately and they also usually come with a collector's card. So watch out for those. Last piece clicks on and there you go. That was easy enough. So with my confidence up, I feel like I am ready to keep on going. There are online instructions which supposedly are easier to follow on uh, the wand company's site. Uh, however, I think I'm going to try and do it all with the actual book. So. so I've already... Uh, made a lot of mistakes in uh, putting the wrong parts together at the wrong times. Um, I, I've broken some parts. If you look at the instructions, uh, they don't quite line up. Uh, so I'd get to the next number, but uh, I I had already screwed something else together and that was a problem. I think also I tried to put it together in modules, which it seems like is a good way to put it together, but you, you really want to have certain pieces done first. So, um, yeah. Okay, it is pretty much done. And now, I think we're ready for the upgrades. Now at the time of this video, you could only get upgrade kits for the radio and for the screen. Um, the rad meter wasn't available yet, and I should say, I wonder if they might not release it if not enough people buy that radio and screen. So please, if you're really interested in this, uh, don't hold off. Make make that purchase now, or let them know that you're interested now, because uh, I really do want that rad meter. But what everyone wants is a device, something that will do something. It'll, it'll play music or connect to Fallout 4. So why didn't they make that? So Chris Bernardo of the Wand Company said that originally they did want to make a fully functional display, one that looked like a CRT and that would actually interact with the game. Problem was, the screens these days are too wide and that making a special screen that would meet that traditional shape would be too expensive and because they're only planning on making a few thousand of these, quote, fans would not be able to afford it. So I took this as a challenge. Finding an affordable screen that would fit the classic square shape with the Pip-Boy interface built in, self-contained and able to interact with Fallout 4. But how can we do that? This is the BlackBerry Passport. 
The passport includes a quad core 2.2 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 system on chip with three gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of expandable internal storage and a battery that lasts up to 30 hours. Most importantly, it contains an almost perfectly square screen. A square screen that can fit our Pip-Boy. It also runs Android APKs, which means I can sideload my Android app and uh, also have a working Android theme. Unfortunately, this means that there will be modification. Taking a part or modifying your phone, Bluetooth, or other devices may not only break them, but may result in electric shock, fire, and even explosions. We all know how that turns out. So don't try this at home. Your Geek Fix. We do stupid things so you don't have to. Before we go any farther, I, I want you to know that I don't want you taking your Blackberry apart. I, I don't recommend it. Uh, not at all. In fact, spoiler alert, I'm going to break one of these phones before we're done. This is not a DIY video on how to modify your Blackberry. It's just an attempt on my part to show it is possible to make this thing work. So, with that, I better start taking it apart. Let's see. Oh, look at that, huh? So it looks like, yeah, this is this is exactly what I was wanting. Uh, this is what we wanted for that screen. Let's test parts of our screen here. Wow. I mean, it really is such a close thing. So the secondary idea was, or my original idea was, if we can turn the screen, if we can turn the screen, this is a lock. I mean, it should work great. Um, but we'll see. So, to be able to turn the screen, there's a couple things we're going to have to do that aren't going to be so pleasant. Uh, I'm not so sure about it. So, this is where it gets tricky. So, the problem with this screen right here is it only has so far that this ribbon can go. And we really rely on these ribbons to be able to stretch and I don't have enough room to do that and to turn this at all. So I did open it up quite a bit and uh, and putting it back on, I do have more room now to be able to uh, move that around. As I twist it, it <sighs> This is the Blackberry Passport. If it looks like I'm sweating, it's because I am. Uh, officially, I ruined that phone. The problem is these ribbons, they tear really easily, and that's what happened. The, the, at least the screen is ruined. And so at least I do have some backups. I have a couple of backups, actually. And uh, this one that I ordered, I ordered it without the backing to it, and I think that'll help me have more access to some of the ribbons. I took some of this capped on tape and some of this electric tape and then carefully uh, bent and twisted that ribbon as uh, I got it into place and it fit. This is the motherboard and when I was uh, trying to fit it in, everything was working fine. The screen worked great, everything was connected just right, but when I was putting it in, it just got moved around a little bit too much and what happened was that this part of the board actually got bent and so the, uh, the areas of the board that would help to, one, uh, make it so the USB would still work, so it could still charge it, and two, keep it from overheating, were both broken. So number one, I couldn't recharge it, and then if I did try to charge it, it started overheating and uh, had this significant draw. It was a quick fire hazard, so um, it's done. This is the BlackBerry Passport. This time though, um, I have, uh, I've decided to do something where I'm gonna keep the, the screen that it came with as well as a back to it. So this way I'm taking apart much less. So all I did was I just took off the backing basically. Then after I got my keyboard off, 
I uh, also this time kept a bar that before I had cut off that supports this USB board. And then I added another board to be able to support that. And then uh, taped everything down. It actually, it works. Uh, it actually works, so uh, yay. <laughs> the problem with using this display that it came with is that it would be very hard to do a touch screen on. And so for that reason, I want something that'll make it have the illusion that the screen is round and uh, also that there are those lines that are there. And the perfect way to do that are these magnifying sheets, uh, which I got this one at Joann's in the mall. So now that we have the device working, all we have to do is get it into the casing. Two problems that I had beforehand was one, that I couldn't access this assistant, which would help me to be able to type or to call up different programs. And so I needed a button for that. I also needed a button somehow to be able to turn it on and off because our switch for on and off is in the middle right now of the Pip-Boy. So to get around this, I basically strapped a small piece of tubing to the back of this center piece uh, because it is on a slide bar. By just giving it a little squeeze, I could power it down or put it into sleep mode. Also, we fit the USB out the side of the device and, uh, and slid it through a part of the cuff. So it looks it looks pretty natural. It's pretty, pretty hard to tell that it's even there. And yet it allows me to be able to uh, charge it. So things look pretty good. Uh, but I have no sound. Remember, I removed the speakers, so uh, that's not going to work. So I'll need some kind of alternative idea. I want to use this button that's on the top and that whole area, but it would have to be a really small speaker. So I looked around and I found these tiny kids' Bluetooth speakers. I knew it would fit perfectly. The tricky part was, how am I going to get inside? I mean, surely they make these so secure that uh, no one can get inside. I mean, you wouldn't want kids getting in there, right? And surely it's not going to be easy to open, right? Twist and open. Oh yeah, here's another thing. When you turn it on, it makes this sound. And when you turn it off, it makes this sound. <laughs> I don't know if they all do that, but mine does. So also, I want to be able to fit a uh, charging cable in there uh, so that I can also charge it from the outside once when it's closed. And I was able to get that and the charging cable to fit in there and it does work. Next for our radio upgrade. Sadly, you have to remove this special radio that uh, we built in order to be able to make it work. Uh, but you'll notice this button right here it's really hard to push. On the new one, it's pretty easy. You will have to take apart and uh, remove a majority of the right side of the module in order to be able to get it all put together. The radio and all its parts also come wrapped in a real Fallout World newspaper. And uh, this is the Boston Bugle and uh, has real stories on it. Again, they make all this great real world garbage that I have to keep, so. Anyway, I'll figure out some place uh, that I can, something I can do that with. I didn't open or use the included batteries because I wanted them for my display. It just looks really cool. Here's the little module itself. So this is one area where I think that they really did plan to upgrade it from the beginning because at least on mine, the glass for these vacuum tubes, they, they have these little pieces that stick out that are supposed to stick in and, and do on the upgrade, but there was no place for it to do that on this original version. So I think they really were made to, to go like this eventually. So this is about how big it's gonna be on me. And uh, I could see people replacing this with leather and I know that's something people are liking to do. But quite frankly, I think this will breathe better uh, and won't get as hot if I had to do a long day at some conference. 
So pre-warning, there's little tiny wires on here that have to go through holes and then have to go through other holes. And it's a lot easier to do uh, before you actually connect it all together. So it comes with these little parts that plug into the back to hold on this cuff, which I actually held off on uh, putting on until uh, after I ever get the strap on it. So now I'm trying to slide them through and it is not easy, but uh, I'm attached to the back of this using some machine screws and I'm only gonna give them a few twists to make sure I don't accidentally go into the phone. I'm done, that's it. So now just to clean up the area and test it out. So I can say this so far, uh, this is very uh, heavy. It definitely feels exactly the way you would assume it would be in the game. It, it, feels, it feels heavy to do this for a while. But it looks very cool. It came out very nicely. Some things seem like perfect fits for the Pip-Boy. Uh, for example, even the format of the way that the uh, opening logo looks, uh, the, the charging symbol, a giant yellow charging symbol, and uh, even this assistant, the way that it comes across, looks very futuristic and, and perfect on this screen. That allows me to be able to uh, have it type things for me or open things up without me needing to use the keyboard because that's gone. When it comes to operating the radio, what we want to do is to push the button on the side and it will turn on. You can see the bulbs are starting to light up. And this is how you select the radio stations just by single clicking in one direction or the other to scan for your radio stations. When you want to turn it up, you just hold down that button and it turns it up or hold down the opposite button to turn it down. The knob on the side actually makes it uh, play real world sounds from the Fallout universe. So basically your real radio uh, is interrupted by uh, radio receptions from the uh, Fallout world. Pretty cool. Turning it off, just double click it and it clicks off. I would recommend turning it off whenever you're not using it because it is only batteries that are in there and in order to get them out you have to take off this whole front section as well as the screws. It's just not worth it. So conserve your energy as much as you can. The Android Pip-Boy app for Fallout 4 works perfectly on this device. It has a perfect orientation and format. However, to get it to work, I had to disable a lot of securities and uh, also do some things with Google Play Store. Also, don't forget that you have to enable it in the game itself. So once when uh, the app starts up, All I have to do now is just select my console. In this case, it's the PS4. And then you're gonna see the IP address. And you're just gonna click that. And then it'll be successful. Now normally when you play Fallout 4, uh, the only way to bring up your Pip-Boy is on the screen. So you have to push a button, it comes up on the screen and blocks everything that you see. But with this, I can actually, uh, I can select where I want to go on the map and it'll just transport me there. I can change my radio stations and uh, I can even uh, go into my inventory, into my apparel, and I can change my clothes uh, to the uh, Vault 111 jumpsuit and I, can, and I can put on my chef's hat. I can get my knife out, and now I'm ready to eat. It's all good. Wait, what is the dog doing? That's weird. I'm just standing on the wall. Um, all right, stop it. You can also play all of the uh, Fallout games, all the Pip-Boy games, uh, which you can pick up as you go through playing with the game. It actually interacts with the game to be able to uh, do that. Because my Pip-Boy runs Android, that means I can also run 
other uh, Pip-Boy or Fallout related apps like Hacker Terminal, Terminal Hacker, Wasteland Hacker, uh, Fallout FM, Galaxy News Radio, A Bomb Radio, and Pip-Boy Life's Wallpaper. Pip-Boy Weather can show you the conditions in whatever vault area you're in. Fallout Community app helps you to stay connected while the Fallout Chat helps you to be able to have an actual way of typing and uh, also emojis that are related to Fallout. Surprisingly, I even got Fallout Shelter to work and it runs pretty great. If you're still waiting for the rad meter to come out and uh, want something to hold you over in the meantime, there are sensors that are built into your phone that actually can pick up on at least uh, electromagnetic energy. And there's this one that's called Geiger Counter Pro that even responds with clicks. So when I bring it in close, it increases. And when I take it away, it goes away. Because it's app based, the sky's really the limit on what you can do with it. I can play other classic games, listen to music, make Skype calls, watch videos and YouTube. I can even use it as my own personal alarm clock. At least that's what we would use it for. What would you use it for? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe, comment, and give us the thumbs up. And stay tuned in for our next video where we'll show you how to paint toys to look like real metal equipment. But for now, this was your Geek Fix.